Om Asato Ma Satkamaya Tamaso Ma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityar Ma Amritam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 O Mother, hold our hand and take us to that infinite peace, the infinite Shanti, the infinite Ananda, through making us realize, taking us from unreal to real. Take us from darkness of ignorance, of not knowing, of the world around, to the reality of the world. Take us from death, for which everyone is fearful and afraid, to immortality. Realize we don't die when this body dies. O oh, Mother, hold our hand and take us across for this life alone. Jai Guru. We pray to our Gurudeva Paramahansa Yogananda, Sri Sri Yukte Shadgiri, Sri Sri Lahiri Mahasaya, to be here to speak through us. We pray to Swami Sri Swami Vivekananda, Holy Mother Sarada, Paramahansa Ramakrishna, to bless us, to take us through work, through bhakti, through jnana, through karma, through practices, across to infinite being, Mahavata, deathless master Babaji, to Krishna, Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwara, to infinite mother, Jagat Janari, Mother Kali. O oh, Mother, take us from this Dvaita to Advaita, to Swaguna Brahman, to Nirguna Brahman, and make us realize that we all are one. One alone exists. Welcome. We decided to make a little change. We have been doing the early morning talk on Sunday, and then thereafter, shortly, is the Zoom talk. So most of you devotees, <laughs> I got the message without you talking to me that two talks are very close to each other. So we got the message in our meditation and Sharda and we thought it would be a very good idea that if we can speak this on Thursday, you reflect on it from Friday morning, Saturday and Sunday around 11 ish that's almost Sunday morning is also you got three days and we go ahead and Sunday morning session and then comes Monday Tuesday Wednesday three days and Thursday again we have the session Shravanam Mananam Nedityasanam so what are we going to talk about what are we going to talk about today I was reflecting on this that it is so difficult for us. We are so, so infinitely, so badly with our mind and body and thought processes and thinking and the conditions of the world around is tied up. To this body and the mind, it is so difficult to prove this infinite presence of the being. Recollect in the God with the temple, mosque, church, Gurdwara, etc. exists, but we have to have faith. And in the modern, in the theistic religion, there is a big problem and a gap there. Because just like the Buddhists, Buddhists said we have a mind, we have a body. You said you have a mind and you have a body and you have a soul. Show me where is the soul. <laughs> this has been thousands of years of battle 
between Buddhism and Hinduism. Shankaracharya came subsequently and brought about this revolution. How do we do this is what we're going to talk about today. And this is called Adhyarapu Adhyarapu Apavada. Sanskrit term. What it means is Vivekananda talks, it, talks about it. We are hypnotized. How to dehypnotize? In the English modern philosophical term, Adhyara Apubada is superimposition. We have been superimposed by our beliefs and faiths and tied up with our mind and the body. To, we have to de superimpose ourselves. We've been talking about many such stories and we've been. Now we're going to re look at the whole thing and come out with the theories which would give you and me a different kind of an outlook. So how do we do that? So a devotee came down to an ashrama and asked the head monk, Swamiji, teach me what is space? Where is space? So the Swamiji is space, everywhere it is space. See, right in front of you, space. So he said, you mean to say that ashram building? He said, no, 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 beyond that. He said, you mean to say those trees? He said, no, beyond that. He said, you mean to see that sky, the mountain? He said, no, okay, I've understood. So what you do, you stay back here for a few days and I will show you what is space. So next year onward, the boy was living in the ashram and Gurudev along with many job, gave him a bag full of sunflower seed. And he said, can you see this place in front, which is the beautiful, used to be garden. He said, you dig it up and make it this place, plant the sunflower seed and make it a beautiful sunflower seed garden. So the disciple budding inquirer wanted to learn that. So he, early morning, he will get up, he'll do his pratana, seva, and whatever task in the kitchen, etc. And then his main task was filling up this garden. And he planted the seed and the sunflowers, as you know, they grow very fast and they grow very tall. And next two, three months time, and the sunflowers rose really six feet tall plant. And it was beautiful. The whole garden was filled. It was a nice fragrance of the sunflower and huge orange, ripe, yellow, orange sunflowers. And Gurudeva, as the next day morning, this disciple was going to water the plant. He said, wait. Now, can you see this flower pot, plant, the garden? He said, yes, sir. And he was very proud. Sir, they're so beautiful flowers. He said, can you see it? It's beautifully filled, the garden. He said, yes. He said, now cut it up. He said, cut it up? He said, yes, chop up everything. Finish it up right from the bottom. Gurudev's order. The disciple, little sad in his heart because he had put a lot of effort to make this come up, but he chopped them up all from the beginning. In about an hour's time, everything was finished and he was sweating, filled with a little bit of dirt and flowers and things like that. And he comes to Gurudev and he said, Gurudev finished. Gurudev was sitting there. So Gurudev said, now look. What do you see? He said, nothing. He said, that is space. So what did Gurudev did? And this is what I'm talking about, Adhyarapu Apuvada. So he filled up the space with something and then took out the thing to explain to him what is space. 
Otherwise, it is so difficult for a child to understand or a disciple or a young to understand what is space. You can talk about it. How do you explain it? You have to taste it. You have to taste the mango. So today, to explain this superimposition and desuperimposition, what Swami Vivekananda talks about hypnotization and dehypnotization. We are all hypnotized. Absolutely. With such beliefs, I am this body, name and a form. So I'm going to give you a little magic today. <laughs> this is a pot I'm holding. Imagine I'm holding a pot. No, no, no. It's not going to be that cheap a trick that I'm holding and I say it is nothing is there. So I'm banishing it. No, no, no. It's not that. Imagine there is a pot in my hand. Uh, the pot is in stage one. It's uh, made of clay. So phase one. I'll take you through four stages. First stage. This is a clay pot. Pot made out of clay. Second stage. I ask you, where is the clay? So you say it is in the pot. So I said it is in the pot, putting inside the pot. I put my hand and take out the clay. He said, no, 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 it is inside, everywhere inside. I said, okay, but look, the weight of this pot is the weight of the clay. At the bottom, there is clay. At the side, there is clay. On top, there is clay. Inside, there is clay. So, what is it? There is, these are called in Sanskrit, various karanas, cause and effect. So there is upadi karana, nimitta karana, like that. Here, the instrumental cause is the potter has made the pot. But now the material cause, the material cause of the pot the shape and the appearance of the pot has been given by the clay. Yes, potter has done it, but it is by the clay. Now, they are clay and pot. What am I holding? You say a pot. I say no, I am holding clay. Yes, it has the shape of the pot. It can do a lot of things like storing of water or milk or curd or paneer or cheese. But I'm holding clay. The weight of the whole thing is the clay. So I'm taking you to superimposition and de-superimposition. We are hypnotized by this clay shape. Stage two. Stage three. Everywhere there is clay. The pot is supposed to be an existence. So existence is a material. So is a clay as a material. For example, I have this here part and this a remote. This has its existence. It is separate from this remote. They are different. They have separate existence. The, the bud, the earbud and the remote. Separate existence. So I have the clay pot. Does the clay and the pot have separate existence? In this case, it is not. Because if it is, I can from here take this away. This continues to exist, isn't it? I can take away this from this. This continues to exist. They have separate existence. But in the clay and the pot, if I take away the clay, pot vanishes. If I take away, remember the earlier example in the last session we had, we talked about the earrings, the necklace, the bangle. And when you tell the child, they're made of gold. So the child thinks this ring, this necklace, this bangle, they are the shape and the name and the form. 
and the gold must be something else. He does not realize that the gold is inside the ornament and if I melt the chain, I can make it into a bangle. The same gold is making a new shape and it can keep on changing infinitely. It depends on me. Same thing is here. The clay can be, if it is not baked, it can be with water mixed up and made it into a platter, a tray, or maybe a vase to put flowers in it. Choice is mine. So right now, notice on the third state, the pot is an appearance of the clay. Now the fourth state. The material cause is the clay. The material cause is supposed to produce an effect. If it produces an effect, then the material cause is successful. It has produced something. But notice the clay has not produced a pot. The pot doesn't exist. Only clay exists. Shape and form does. But that's not it. The clay pot can change into a vase or a plate or a platter or a tray. So where do we stand now? There is no substance reality in the pot. It is only an appearance. It is not apart from the clay. Like any two objects that you see, left hand, right hand, the shawl, the kutta, they are all separately existent. No separate substance. If it is not there, then what has clay really produced? It is not cause of a different material. They are all merged. In the pot, if I ask you, where is the clay? Everywhere is the clay. If I take away the clay, the pot vanishes. So the pot doesn't exist. Clay alone exists. It's a little difficult to understand it. But this is why superimposition, desuperimposition. By the end of today, you will have a pretty big idea. And this we are getting into deeper and deeper into Vedanta. Now, same thing is with the gold and the rings. Same thing is with, let's say, the ocean, the waves, the bubble, the froth, the water sprays. They're not made of water. They appear as ocean, the wave, the bubble and the froth. They appear because of water. The water alone appears as the ocean. When it is calm, when it is turbulent as waves or bubbles and froth, that different state of the water. Isn't it? The same thing, the existence is alone is existing. Now, let us look into what has happened really. A pot drishti, a pot appearance, and there is clay drishti. So this is the paradigm. The pot drishti and clay drishti is only an appearance of the clay of different form. So let's look at this. So what is it? What do we do with it? Let's look at the universe. The universe exists. The planets, the mountain, the ocean, the earth, the people, the earthworms, the dogs, the dolphin, the plants, the trees, the garden, the buildings, the cars, they exist. So do the waves and the ocean and the bubble and the froth. But we know that Brahman alone is the creator, Ishwara. As per theistic religion, 
or as per Advaita religion, the Brahman alone. Brahman, as per Taitari Upanishad, is Satyam Jnanam Anantam Brahman, is the explanation of definition of God, Ishvara. Satyam Sat, existence, Jnanam is the knowledge, Anantam infinite is the Ishvara, is Brahman. So, Brahman alone has created this universe. Water alone has created the waves and the ocean and the bubbles and the froth. So, what Vedanta says, we say this is ocean which contains water. The bubbles and the froth which contains water. But that is an incorrect statement. Vedanta says now, if it was so, then the wave can exist just like the clay and the pot. And the water can exist. They can have separate existence. But they don't. They're an integral part and they're only appearance of the water. So this universe is an appearance as per Advaita Vedanta of existence. So we say this exists. I exist. You exist. Vedanta says no. You look at it, change the paradigm and call it existence is an infinite ocean of existence which in turn has chosen to be you me the mountain the building the cars the sky the planets infinite existence but existence has become the dog and the dolphin and the worms of the plants the existence alone exists sat that Sat existence is. So now look at that pot which has vanished and has become only understanding is the clay. The Brahman alone now is just like the clay create the pot. Appearance of a pot came from the clay. Clay alone has the substance. It has not created anything. It has created an appearance. Yes, <laughs> we say that appearance. Same thing is the wave. Created an appearance by the water. If the ocean is calm, the water alone exists. And 20,000 feet of water may be in that ocean. And when it is calm, little different idea, but reflect upon it. Then only I realize the depth of the ocean. Otherwise, I'm only interested in the bubble and the froth and the size of the wave with a tsunami or a big wave or a giant wave or a breaker. I'm only limited to the waves and the bubble and the froth. The moment it becomes calm, the moment you and I become calm, we realize the depth of the existence. And now look at all things which appear is existence alone. So now what has happened is we are so badly tied up, superimposed, hypnotized. So we die with the body dies. We suffer from the body suffering. We suffer from something attacks our body or somebody else's like Corona or like poverty or a bad relationship or there is a quarrel or there's a fight because your mind and the body and the name is affected and you think that's who you really are but that is not real is what Advaita is bringing us an awareness so what happens now what the difference in this awareness now the pot is not there reality is the clay the whole pot weighs is the weight of the clay and the clay can be reformed into anything else there was once it reminds me of a it actually happened in Bihar. They used to have plastic cups, and especially in the railway stations and bus stations, and they found it with increasing huge pollution. So one of the minister decided, listen, why don't you have kullar mittika handika cups from the clay pot, small clay pot, <laughs> teapot, many of you had, must have had. He said, make it from that. And everybody was very happy. It is, of course, non toxic to the nature. And it will, the minister said, it will merge back with the earth. Then one of the journalists wrote, 
that dear minister it's a very good idea but it is the idea is based on wrong thing that clay pot that you're making for the chai the tea it is not going to disintegrate you look at any civilization today harappa mahenjodaro mayan any university any civilizations all we have is the baked clay pots and the clay spoons and the clay whatever they created with the clay they do not disintegrate they don't merge back if it is baked if it is not baked then not baked clay pot can be shaped into a vase so just by the way i thought i'll share with you a little bit it was a very interesting so the minister realized he learned his lesson the clay pot going into the paradigm of the pot paradigm to clay paradigm the understanding pot drishti to clay drishti so the pot vanished clay alone remained the cause was not a cause anymore the clay because there was no effect there was no second existence now this whole universe the people this chair the table you me the mountain the planets an infinite existence of the universe many of which we are conscious of many we are not conscious we don't know supposing you have never been to let's say a city in switzerland or switzerland itself you know about it you read about it but you haven't been there to experience it so to your in the world of reality it exists in theory but it doesn't exist in experience so now similar thing is happening with the universe now so brahman alone exists which in the stage 1 the brahman is making this universe in the stage 2 what is this universe made of brahman sat existence what is in the stage 3 like the pot and the clay everything around is brahman there is nothing which is not the brahman so how can i say this is only an appearance of a man of a woman of a dog of an animal of a mountain of a flower or of a computer of anything whether conscious or unconscious it is the existence alone which is taken it up that state now in the stage 4 there is no other appearance than the brahman alone so the supreme infinite being sat alone exists supposing you say it is other than that existence existence is chair table existence is you and me what is opposite of existence is non existence it doesn't exist so advaita says very clearly the entire universe is only one one pure being alone exist nothing else there is a western philosopher he just died a few decades ago his name is martin hardiker martin hardiker did not become very famous but he is there in google you can study him chase him find out a little bit he got mixed up with the little bit of the german nazis and all that so that's how he became a little unpopular but he had a very powerful question he asked the world imagine a western philosopher what is existence what is existence what exists and why does anything have to exist at all something exists nothing doesn't exist opposite of existence is nothing and this created a big stir from the westerner and swami vivekananda saying one alone exists appears as nature and soul one alone exists appears as nature and soul now let's take that remember that the superimposition de superimposition of the 
the sunflower we just talked about it what did the guru do he filled it up the space to explain what is the absence of filling up space otherwise it's very difficult so i'll give you there are lots of stories which keep talking about it i will give you the different angle now once again let's talk about you know there is this in the ancient time now also in some of the places it is there a rich man is considered how rich he is by the number of elephants he owned <laughs> elephant and that's how the term came white elephant you keep feeding them they're apparently good for nothing they just just for a little spin around you can ride the elephant and that's it it's supposed to be good for nothing but it was a symbol of richness you must have seen many films where the kings of all over the world particularly in india owned elephant so one rich man he had 17 elephants and he had three sons one two three sons I'm explaining superimposition, desuperimposition through this little beautiful mathematical example. The father, when he died, he wrote down in his will, half of what I have will go to the eldest son. He has served me well. And one third of what I have among the elephants, the elephants is the wealth. So half of those 17 elephants will go to my eldest son and one third of that will go to my second son and one ninth will go to my third son. Father died and after that now they have to divide the elephants. Problem came up. 17 elephants now how do I make it half? <laughs> Eight is 16 half of 16 and 9 is half of 18 how do I divide that this is a big problem and they're all thinking thinking worried what do we do now father why did he put us into this trouble one of father's friend who also had several elephants came for a visit on the elephant itself <laughs> and he came and said why are you looking so sad what has happened everybody must be thinking sitting like this he didn't even get down from the elephant. They said, sir, this is the problem. He's sitting in the elephant. They're looking up and telling him. He said, oh, okay. It's not a problem. I'll give you my elephant. Now you don't have 17. You have 18 elephant. One half of that, half of those 18 is nine. So these nine elephants, elder son, these are yours. One third of 18 is six. So now this six goes to the second son. So six plus nine is 15. Two are left. So he said, these two are to you, youngest son. 17, one is still left. He said, that one I'm taking back mine. He didn't even get down from the elephant. What did he do? This is called superimposition, desuperimposition. There was an issue, the problem. They didn't understand it. He desuperimposed, removed that problem issue by dehypnotizing, adding in something, sunflower added in something, and created a very easy issue. Remember the story of the donkeys. The donkey, the washerman, went on to washed and as he was unloading he realized oh my god i forgot the rope how am i going to tie the donkey and if i don't tie the donkey is going to wander off and what will i do at the end of the day where am i going to go and catch and search for him and i have to walk a lot wash them i can't have the trouble of the donkey wandering off and he was looking very sad now he can't go back all the way house is very far away one wise man from the nearby village happened to be passing by. He said, hey, what happened? Why are you looking so worried? He said, so I made a bad mistake. I left the tying rope there. He said, that's not a problem. You do one thing. You unload your clothes. And now make sure that the donkey sees you. You tie the donkey with an imaginary rope around his neck and around the tree. 
and leave him. Don't worry, donkey is not going to go. He said, really? So he tried it. He didn't believe it. But he went, took the clothes to the river. He was washing and once in a while he was looking back. A donkey was standing still and checked often. Donkey was dead. He said, wow, very nice. Now he comes back, finished, loaded up the donkey. <laughs> and now he says, chal hut, let's walk. Donkey won't move. Remember the story? Donkey is straight there. He is not moving. He is doing hee haw. He is trying to beat him. Come on, move. Hut, hut. He is not moving. He said, now what have they done? This wise gentleman, he goes running to him. His house was close by. Now what do I do? The wise man says, listen, you had tied him. He is still tired. Go and untie him. He said, how do I untie him? There is no rope. He said, you make the same thing. Make sure donkey sees you. Untie him. He goes back and unties him. And he says, hut. And donkey started walking. He said, wow. So here, superimposition, desuperimposition. There is a beautiful saying in the Himalayas. It is in Hindi. He says, the statement goes as, Advaita Vedanta me, Advaita Vedanta me, Adhyaro Apubada to Uska Hridehe. The heart of the Advaita Vedanta is in superimposition, desuperimposition. Advaira, Advaita Apubada. So this Adhyaro Apubada is the heart of the Vedanta. So now, Look, what the donkey is tied up. Donkey thinks that I'm tied up. And what all the Dhobi did is untie him. Just imaginary untying. You and I have to untie ourselves. We are tied up. We are infinite being. We have tied up this mind and the body and the name and the form. When you untie, you can still, you don't have to run up to mountain and become a monk. Swami Vivekananda is saying, those who have run up to the caves to live there, do their meditation practices and die there, has missed the boat. Missed the boat meaning, has missed the essence of the spiritual journey. And those who are plumbed into the sansara and having you know, whatever the sansara is supposed to give you and suffering and fun and the joy and the children and the grandchildren has missed the boat too. So what do we do then? Not sansara, not cave, then what? He said, be in the sansara, but be aware that you are not tied. You are not the pot. You are not the ornament. You are the gold. You are the water. Which in turn, so now when I know that I am the water, I see all the other waves also as water. So I see my husband also that same consciousness. Water is consciousness, is making this body and that body and that small bubble, that poor guy or that animal or the plant or this entire universe. I see God in Swaguna Brahman in a Shiva Ling. Or in the statue. And in Hinduism, there is a beautiful statement. Any question anybody asks, when you explain Hinduism, when we talk to the children, every question has got two answers. Does God exist? Yes. Does God exist? Yes, it exists. No, it doesn't exist. It depends on your perception. Is God a male? Yes and no. God can be female. You have Shiva or Krishna. You have Divine Mother, Swaguna Brahman. <laughs> there is always yes and no. Does God contain into the figure and the statues and the shivaling? God is only there. Yes and no. And no, God could be also Nirgun. Nirguna Brahman. Advaita Brahman. So, 
This is called Sanatan Dharma in the Hinduism, which is explained. Now, look at the donkey. Donkey had to be untied by the imaginary method. This is what the Advaita Vedanta is doing to you and me, is to untying us and showing us that's the way. It's the way. You have to go down there, that is it. Look at the princess of Kashi story. We have been talking about all these stories. Look at the superimposition, de-superimposition. Swami Vivekananda is hypnotism, non-hypnotizing. So what is it? Prince was hypnotized. The prince says, this picture is my heart. If I don't marry, my life is gone. The prime minister showed it to him. Hey, prince, this is not the princess of Kashi. He said, what? It doesn't matter. Anybody she is, I'm going to marry her. I'm in love with her. This is what is happening to you and me. We are in that picture, in the body, in the form, and are in love. And then the Prime Minister said, Prince, Tat Tom Asi, you are that, and told him the story about how he was a baby boy, and the painting was made on him, he was dressed up as a king, and this is the five-year-old, and Prince looked at the date of print, five years old, he said, it must be my age, and he fell in love. So what happened now? De-superimposition took place. Instantly, Prince waved it off from his head, and he was joyful in Ananda. The moment you and I start to realize we aren't this existence, automatically the Ananda, Sat, Chit, is consciousness, is existence would take place. So, how do you teach? How do you understand the Vedanta, Shankaracharya, Vivekananda, and subsequently thousands of great masters, rishis, have gone ahead and explained to us how do we do that through these very simple parables and the stories. So we are that infinite being, but tied up by what we have fears, what we have love, what we have hatred, what is the anger. We are tied up with the people. We are tied up with our desires, with our hatred, results, achievements, people, and we have become limited. We are unlimited. We are infinite. Only we need to know. We need to be aware. Unlike the yogi, Yogi would have done what to the prince, told the prince, don't look at the girl. She is a girl. She is going to distract you. Close your eyes. Paramahamsa Ramakrishna is saying, what kind of a God is it that you have to close your eyes to see him? The moment you open your eyes, God doesn't exist. No. It doesn't have to be that only you go into Samadhi to experience. There's a beautiful statement in the Himalaya and they say, in English, it goes on to the Hindi translation that your infinite beloved God, you have put him into the prison, the prison of Samadhi. Samadhi ka jail mein aapke um, antar yami ko aap band kar diye. Meaning as if only through Samadhi you can see him. Now you see him right now here, this moment at this place. Being what? aware. Yogis would have told the prince, close your eyes. Don't look at the picture. I'll take the picture away. Or switch off the TV. Pull the TV. Why? Because TV picture is making you getting scared. Don't look at the movie. Now, the Advaita is saying beautifully, be aware it is only a movie. The screen is the reality. The picture is not. And you know immediately, just like your dream. As you wake up, even if you had seen a baby is born, you don't go out for shopping for the baby now as you wake up. You don't, in the dream, you may have been eating pizza and you wake up and you say, oh, I have eaten two pizzas. You don't say that. Similarly, over here, you need to realize, become aware. So in this awareness, this untying, and will give you a beautiful through the Vedanta, Understanding of this infinite being through Sat Chit, 
ananda chit consciousness and sat existence are not separate they are not differentiated chit is existence if there is no existence in chit that is consciousness it doesn't exist and similarly the existence can be there but if you don't have the consciousness of the existence you cannot experience it for example there are many things exist in this universe you and i may not be conscious of so as far as i'm concerned of this existence because consciously i can perceive it there are maybe many planets maybe stars billions of things in the world and existing in this world itself maybe i've not seen so i'm not conscious of it doesn't exist but in our world sat chit ananda the pot can only exist when i perceive it the flower i can only experience when the light falls on it the light enters my eye and makes me have an image in my brain and the mind perceives it through the light of the consciousness through the remember reflective consciousness tell the mind this is a rose red colored rose so now we were understanding towards the end i'll give you one little story always infinitely unlimited we got limited to this body and that bring in the suffering now when you become aware even in the journey you will see the world will change so beautifully many of the thing you will overlook it and as you go towards more and more realization you become buddha paramahamsa enlightened nirvana those are nothing else but becoming aware i'm infinite i'm not tired so there was this little fight going on the dvaitavad last story okay <laughs> comes up and says i'm going to fight with this dvaitavad what are they saying this world doesn't exist world doesn't exist so he goes on and lots of people come down to sit who wins in the fight the dvaitavadi and he's a nyaya specialist nyaya remember we talked about chaitanya mahaprabhu he was a nyaya uh, specialist he asked and the advaitas the guru who was the most enlightened one he said i don't want to participate in all this contest and i don't want to prove anything and the other were trying to fight but they were losing the dvaitavadi said bodhi bin doesn't exist can you see this mountain can it vanish can it go into non existence how can you say world doesn't exist so advaitavadi went and said gurudev gurudev wake up he said no i'm not going to wake up i have fever the one of the guy who was favorite of the gurudev he said wait let me try he went and said gurudev he said what i have got fever he said gurudev you don't have fever he said i don't have fever he gets up advaitavadi is very simple he gets up and he said see you don't have fever i don't have fever okay what do you want me to do he said sir we are losing the world is believing it is only dvaita <laughs> so he goes and this guy says how can you say mountain doesn't exist so the advaitavadi guru asks him tell me did you come first or did the mountain come before you were you aware of the mountain first or the mountain become aware of you 2 plus 2 is 4 is the 2 plus 2 4 aware of you or you were aware of 2 plus 2 4 if your awareness was not there will the mountain exist if you are not conscious with this infinite consciousness supreme will the mountain exist the dvaitavadi did pranam and he went off so with that i wish you all happy journey till we meet every morning in our sessions and throughout the day keep thinking of the supreme dvaita advaita divine mother saguna brahman nirguna brahman आकाश शांति पृथ्वी शांति मन शांति चित्त शांति वायु शांति जलस्पत शांति 
Agniya Shanti, Gau Shanti, Uttaradisha Shanti, Dakshinaya Shanti, Purabadisha Shanti, Uttaradisha Shanti, Paschimaya Shanti, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Check.